So first of all, could I wish you all a very happy Easter? Uh, it's not an Easter day like any of us uh, have ever experienced before, but it doesn't change the fact that uh, I am here uh, to celebrate with you the victory of Christ over sin, over despair, and over death itself. Uh, and my prayer this Easter is for our health service, for our world, for the leaders of the world, uh, for our own Queen and government, and for the many thousands of people who are suffering because of this coronavirus. But it's also my last day as Bishop of Chelmsford, and this isn't quite how I imagined I would be speaking to you and to the diocese uh, on this last occasion. Uh, and I'm here in my little chapel in Bishop's Court because all our churches are closed. But the church isn't closed because the church is us, the people of God, and our prayer, our witness, our service, well, that goes on. But when a bishop leaves a diocese, uh, the last ceremony is the laying down of the crozier. This, this isn't the Chelmsford crozier, this is my own crozier, which I've carried around me all across the diocese. Uh, and this altar isn't the altar in the cathedral, it's the altar in this little chapel. Uh, but I lay down this crozier, as it were, symbolically, um, in, in thanksgiving for my ministry here and for all the blessings that I've received. And uh, when my successor is appointed, uh, they will come to the cathedral, they will pick up the Chelmsford Crozier, and I pray that you will give to that person the same love and support that you have given to me. So it is with great thanksgiving for my time as Bishop of Chelmsford that I, as it were, pass on the baton to others and pray God's blessing upon this diocese of ours. Stephen, we live in these strange times when the cathedral, like churches across the world, is not open for public worship and therefore we cannot lay up your crozier as would be customary as a bishop moves on. I simply want to say it has been a great pleasure over the last six and a half years to work with you as Dean of Chelmsford and guardian therefore of your see, the cathedral at Chelmsford, the location of your ministry at the heart of this vast diocese, uh, a centre of teaching, a centre of evangelism and a place of worship. Having tried to compose something clever out of the ordinal for bishops, I return of course to 2 Timothy, the words of Paul. Herald, apostle, teacher, that seems to me at least to lie at the heart of your ministry and the greatest expression of your gifts and are the foundation of your ministry not simply as Bishop of Chelmsford but going forward as Archbishop of York. And therefore my prayer for you, a prayer you've heard me say often but I say specially uh, with you at the heart of its intention. Father, pour out your Holy Spirit upon Stephen and give him a new understanding of your Holy Word, a new experience of your extraordinary power and a new consecration to your splendid service, that your love may grow in him and your kingdom come through Christ our Lord. Amen. So Stephen, it's Easter Day and though sadly none of us can be together, we want to proclaim that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. But also we want to proclaim our thanks to you for your ministry and leadership amongst us down these last 10 years. You know we had big plans as we came to this point of saying goodbye for now, but it wasn't to be. But I know I speak for us all in East London churches and across Essex in this mighty diocese of Chelmsford, as you so often describe it, when I offer a massive thanksgiving for the way you've led us, served us, walked with us, and simply above all, how you've been to us down those years as a pastor, a shepherd, and a friend. As the ordinal says, you have known your people and been known 
by them. You've held our transforming presence, vision, high before us always. You've held this diocese, this large, diverse diocese together when some theological and cultural differences and geographical distance could so easily have pushed us apart. And you've taught us the faith so ably, not only your winsome scriptural exposition, but just the aptness and the timing of that teaching to the moment and to the need. Your creativity is immense and few of us know what it must have cost you in early mornings and late nights as you've laboured and beavered hard over pastoral letters, synod addresses and your many books which I know have transformed and enhanced the lives of so many people across the world, in fact. You are a great communicator and storyteller, and we thank God for you. But now you and Rebecca begin a new story after today as you prepare to be the Archbishop of York. And as you begin to prepare and leave, I want to remind you of some words you said to me when I first became Bishop of Barking almost six years ago. You know I was concerned to uh, get my head round the diocesan mission statement, Transforming Presence, and I'd misplaced some documents. But you said this to me, and I'll never forget it. Peter, don't worry too much about that stuff. Simply love God, love people, and tell them about Jesus. Stephen, that exactly sums you up as a bishop, but more so as a brother and disciple of Christ. That is who you are, that is what you do, and that is what you will be as you go north again as Archbishop. So today, we begin to grieve your loss as you are called North. But we know it is good and right that you now give yourself to the Diocese and Province of York in leadership and ministry to the Church of England and the wider Anglican Communion. That is your calling as you walk into the future. So we release you with much thanks. We had presents for you today, and I think you are going to open two of them at least later, but there are more for down the line when maybe somehow we can get back together. But for now, please know that you go with our deepest thanks, our widest love, and our strongest prayers. And as you have blessed us with these words, we bless you and Rebecca. May the Lord go before you to guide you. May the Lord stand behind you to strengthen you. May the Lord watch over you to bless you in his love and peace. Go in the love and peace of Christ. Bishop Stephen, on behalf of all the laity in our churches and in the diocese, I wanted to say thank you for all that you've given us over these nine years as being our diocesan bishop. I know you would have wanted this celebration and goodbye to have been in Chelmsford Cathedral so more people could join in, but I hope you'll accept these few words of thanks from another town I know you love, your hometown of Leon C. As our diocesan bishop, you've been in amongst us. You've visited us in our churches. You've walked through our deaneries. You've invited many of us to Bishop's Court during Marquee Week. And perhaps more importantly, you've been there for our whole diocese, those of all faiths and none. You've been a bishop from East London and Essex for East London and Essex. 
and you've really engaged, communicated with and shown God's love for everyone. The whole diocese will want to thank you for that and for the legacy of being one of us, with us, that you and Rebecca have left. For us laity, you sent us the daunting challenge of being a transforming presence in every community we serve. But you helped us do that through encouraging us to have our own spiritual development and our own rule of life. And of course, you've been a great advocate for the whole diocese in fighting against social injustice and have done this nationally and especially in the House of Lords. Bishop, we'll miss you. We'll miss your thoughtful, silent prayer before you preach. We'll miss your stories. We'll miss your infectious enthusiasm for the gospel, your leadership of this great diocese and your friendship. But we hope and pray that you'll take something of Chelmsford to York in your new role as Archbishop. I know you will continue to pray for us as we will continue to pray for you. The role of Bishop of Chelmsford will continue, of course, and we've already started the process to discern who God is calling to be the next bishop. The Vacancy in C Committee, which I've been asked to chair, has already met and will be communicating with the diocese after Easter. So keep your eyes open for that, everybody. Rebecca and Bishop Stephen, thank you both for all that you've given us, for your ministry, for your leadership, for your friendship and commitment to share the gospel of Christ. We wish you well in York and in your wider responsibilities in the Anglican Communion. With our prayers, grateful thanks and very much love to you both. Bishop Stephen, on behalf of all the clergy of Chelmsford Diocese, we want to wish you every blessing and uh, love as you and Rebecca go up north to continue your ministry. It's been a great honour having you as our diocesan bishop. You've consistently inspired us. You've given us a lot of fun. You've helped us with our preaching, our praying, our evangelism. You've helped us to face issues about the future that most of us would much rather not think about. And you've done so with a humility and a graciousness, which has been an inspiration to us. I've particularly appreciated the fact that as an Essex boy, you've helped us regain our pride in Essex and East London. There's a wonderful place where God is at work and where we can serve him. There's something isn't there about always giving to God our best. It seems to me that as a diocese, we're giving you to the North, to the National Church as our gift. So you go with our love and our prayers. We know that you will continue to think of and pray for us. But thank you so much for all that you have given to us and meant to us in these past nearly 10 years. Bishop Stephen, many congratulations on your appointment as Archbishop of York from all of us here at St Malitis College. We've been hugely grateful for your uh, encouragement, your support, your championing of us in your role as Bishop of Chelmsford, but also in your role as one of the co-chairs of the board of the college. You've been unstinting in your commitment. You've uh, encouraged us to think missionally. You've uh, pushed us to take kingdom risks whenever that has felt uh, most appropriate. We're going to miss you, but we've been uh, really grateful for what you've given and we wish you all the best for the future and look forward to working with you in your new role. We hope you enjoy your farewell celebrations. Rebecca, I've heard Stephen say something like this, behind many a successful man, there is a surprised woman. I'm about to change that just a little bit and say alongside many who follow God's calling to prominent positions are partners, husbands and wives who are not totally surprised at God's call on their other half. I think that you, Rebecca, are one of those. As you have followed God's call on your own life and had a career and interests apart from Stephen's, you have nevertheless walked alongside each other, supporting and encouraging each other. You have recognised and encouraged Stephen's gifts. You gave him time to write. You have no doubt seen him at his best and at his worst. You have upheld him in prayer, as he has you. As you've travelled alongside each other, you are not often upfront and obvious, but you are there. I picture you now in the cathedral, in big services there, 
where we've seen you exercise your gift of making people feel welcome, feel as though they matter. You radiate warmth and hospitality. One of the occasions you are up front is at the annual Ordinance Supper at Villa Ricky, as you speak to the partners and spouses. Always at the centre of your talk is the encouragement for them to be true to themselves, to follow their own calling. I know that they appreciate that encouragement. As a potter, you know all about moulding clay into shape, making it the beautiful thing you want it to be. You know how to make beautiful things. And Psalm 139 reminds us that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Our prayer for you as you head to York is that God will continue to mould you, continue the work he's begun in you, and that you might love living in the north again. Lord, as the diocese moves into a new season, we pray that we face the days ahead in unity, encouraging one another in love. We pray that you keep us resilient and strong during the Episcopal vacancy and trust that even as you gifted us with Stephen, you will gift us again with the right person for these times. We thank you for Stephen and for Rebecca, without whom he could not have achieved all that he did. We thank you for the joy and the passion with which Stephen brought the message of the cross. As they go to York, we ask that you prepare the way, Lord, so that everything from the mundane to the spiritual goes well. We praise you for the insight and integrity with which Stephen has led us. Continue to be with him in Bishop's Thorpe, Lord. Guide him by the power of your Holy Spirit as he carries out the many responsibilities of the Archbishop of York. Clothe him with a double portion of your anointing and make him a source of wisdom for your whole church. Surround him with Ruths, Joshuas and Calebs, men and women of faith who will be loyal, speak the truth, share his vision and support him in his ministry. As Stephen takes up his new position in these most difficult of times, Father, surround him and Rebecca with your favour, shower them with your blessings, uphold them by your grace, and fill them with your joy and peace. Amen. God of our beginnings and our endings, we celebrate all that we have shared with Stephen. And we ask your blessing on Stephen and Rebecca as they continue their journey. May the power of your presence bless this time of our leave-taking. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank God for all that Stephen has shared with us, for his wisdom in leadership, for clarity in decision-making, with an ear always open to listen, to often unexpected voices, for being among us with authority to serve. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank God for Stephen's public witness to Christian faith and values in city, diocese, across East London and Essex and beyond. For Stephen's ministry to the world of work, in office, factory, and field, for his challenge to the complacent and compassion for those in need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank God for Stephen's presence in the public life of our nation, in the councils of the National Church, in Parliament, and as servant to the Sovereign. We thank God for Stephen's presence alongside people of other faiths, working in collaboration with others to bring tolerance and understanding. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank God for Stephen's work with people of all ages, especially the young and in our schools, for his leadership in mission, his partnership with parishes, and his missionary journeys in Kenya, Sweden, Trinidad and Tobago, and across the worldwide church. 
We thank God for his challenge to the churches to rethink the way they work and for words of hope and enthusiasm as together we seek to renew ministry in this diocese. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We thank God for his humour and forbearance in the exercise of ministry, for letting variety flourish within common bonds of faith and discipline, for his presence among us as a leader in worship and a person of prayer. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We praise and thank you, God of the journey, for Stephen and Rebecca as they leave us. We entrust them to your loving care, knowing that you are always the faithful traveller and companion on the way. Shelter and protect them from all harm and anxiety. Grant them the courage to meet the future and grace to let go into new life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And to conclude the prayers of intercession, this prayer which is inspired by the life and writings of St Francis, who has been such an inspiration to Stephen in his ministry. Lord, make us instruments of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I have already uh, prayed for and commissioned Bishop Peter to be acting Bishop of Chelmsford uh, over these coming months as we await the appointment of my successor. But as I wish you again a very happy and blessed Easter and pray that together we may find a way through this uh, terrible coronavirus pandemic, but let me offer a prayer and a final blessing. Heavenly Father, may your blessing be upon your church in these dark and difficult days, that we may bear witness to Christ. And may the Lord go before you to guide you. May he stand behind you and give you strength. May his love watch over you and always keep you in his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And may God always bless, guide, sustain uh, the mighty Diocese of Chelmsford. We're very grateful to the Diocese for the presence that you've given us. Um, and uh, I'm going to open my one first, which uh, since we're on film, we don't want this film to be too long, I'll try to open quickly. Um, and uh, it is um, a most magnificent, oh, wow. uh, I think it's a lithograph, but I'm not sure, but I certainly know the artist. It's by Craigie Aitchinson, who's one of my favourite painters who uh, endlessly painted pictures of the cross. But what's great about his illustrations of the cross is there's never any people in them other than Jesus himself, but there are also always animals. And this one actually is the picture that's on the front cover of one of my books. So Chumps for Diocese, thank you very much. Right, and over to me, um, I'll open mine. I wasn't sure I was gonna get anything, but it's very lovely and very generous. So it's, oh wow, I know this. This is another 
painting. Well, this is a painting. It's of an artist that I've got one of her pictures before. And it's called The Luminous Sea. And this is something I love the... Um, the, 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 the wind farm, wind farm I, I, think yes. I think it might be the coast of Bradwell. So, thank you for all your love and your generosity. It's a pity that we couldn't do this with people here. Thank you. <laughs>